Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Agriculture, Water Resources, Resources and Northern Australia. Will the Deputy Prime Minister advise the House how the government's energy policy will guarantee reliable and affordable energy for hard-working farmers and businesses in regional communities, like those in my electorate of Flynn? Is the minister aware of any alternative approaches? The Deputy Prime Minister has the call. Well, uh, Mr Speaker, I thank the honourable member for his question and note uh, that in his past that he has done actually done blue-collar work. He was a fettler. He actually believes in blue-collar worker jobs. He actually believes in blue-collar worker jokes. And unfortunately, unfortunately, those on the other side, a lot of university graduates, no, no problems with that, a lot of solicitors, but no labourers in the Labor Party anymore, uh, the member for Fleetwood, no labourers in the Labor Party anymore. See, they actually believe that labourers are politically incorrect, politically incorrect. And once you can see that in their jihad that they run against some of the vital coal fire, fire assets in your electorate. The member for Flynn would be aware of Calide B, Calide C, Gladstone and Stanwell, all employing blue-collar workers, employing blue-collar jobs. Because the member for Flynn is not embarrassed about blue-collar workers. He has been a blue-collar worker, unlike the Labor Party. Has never, very rarely do you ever find someone in the Labor Party who's actually done a labouring job. A labouring job. A labouring job. And then, and then the teachers all stick up their hand. Well, I've got no problems with teachers either. Teachers are good people. And the member for Melbourne Energy and the Environment. I mean, where are these people who actually ever work for a living in the Labor Party? Where are the labourers in the Labor Party? Where are the labourers in the Labor Party? They don't exist anymore. But we are going to make sure that we are going to make sure that we keep the jobs of Flynn, the people of Flynn, in the industrial city of Gladstone. We are going to look after the people of Gladstone rather than just look after the people of Annandale. We are going to make sure that the basket weavers do not reign supreme in our power policy of this nation. And we look for the member for Maribyrnong, who apparently used to represent Labor, never did it himself, but he used to represent them, represent them to come to the dispatch box and tell us about his grand vision for Australia. 50 per cent renewables. 50 per cent renewables. There won't be a job left in this place. They say today in the paper 75 per cent of coal-fired power stations will have to be closed down. So what does the member for Hunter have to say about that? What does the member for Shortland have to say about that? What does the member for Herbert have to say about that? Well, they say nothing. They say nothing because they don't stand up for workers anymore. They don't stand up for workers anymore. And then we hear the piece de resistance. Of course, we're all waiting for Mr Rudd's book to come out. We're all waiting for Mr Rudd's book to come out because the moment that we hear that the member for Lilly, the former treasurer, treasurer of the millennia, was put there as a poison pill. Was right there as a boys and bill. He was there to blow up Rudd. He ended up blowing up a whole budget. He ended up blowing the budget of the nation. He was there as a joke. He was there as a joke. But they never saw the funny side of it. They kept him there. They made him the treasurer of Australia. What an enlightenment! What an enlightenment the Labor Party is. What a wonderful grace to our economic future the Labor Party is. And you know what? The joke is still here. The joke is still here. I think the joke is making a comeback. Members on both sides.